if you look up at the night sky, you're seeing just a fraction of what's out there. Billions of stars stretching across the Milky Way, each one potentially surrounded by worlds. Some of those worlds could be like ours. Some might even have oceans, mountains, and atmospheres perfect for life. And here's the thing. The universe is old, billions of years old. Life had plenty of time to emerge and evolve. By now, shouldn't there be countless civilizations out there? Civilizations far older, far more advanced, maybe even capable of traveling between the stars. And yet, nothing, no signals, no spacecraft, no signs at all. This silence is at the heart of one of science's greatest mysteries, the Fermi Paradox. A question so simple and yet so disturbing that will be answered by the famous Brian Cox in the next couple of minutes. If the universe is so big and life has had so much time to develop, where is everybody? Some scientists think it means life is incredibly rare. Others believe intelligent civilizations destroy themselves before they can explore the galaxy. And some suggest they're out there, but they're hiding. The Fermi Paradox forces us to face an uncomfortable possibility that either we are the only intelligent beings in the galaxy, or there are others, and something is keeping us apart. Well, it's the Fermi Paradox. So the Fermi Paradox, going back to the great physicist Enrico Fermi, is essentially the question, where are they? You base that on the observation that, let's say there are somewhere between 200, 200 and 400 billion suns in the Milky Way, something like that. We think a lot of them have planets. Many of them have potentially Earth-like planets. So you have 13 billion years of time. You have hundreds of billions of suns, probably trillions of planets. And so it, it is a reasonable question to ask, why not? Why has a civilization not arisen ahead of us? So let's say a billion years before us. Why has no civilization escaped its home world, apparently? and essentially written its existence across the sky. What, why is that? Why don't we see anybody? One of the arguments is often framed in terms of self-replicating machines, so-called von Neumann machines, after the great mathematician John von Neumann. And so, essentially, the idea is that we, what, what are we? What's a human being? It's a replicator, right? It's a, it's a physical object. It operates according to the laws of physics. That's what we do, and we replicate. And so it seems that there's no reason why we couldn't build replicators that are essentially, you know, AIs, basically, right? It's almost like an AI-controlled 3D printer with some mining stuff attached to it, and you send it off to the asteroids or to Mars or to the next, to Alpha Centauri, to the system there with, and all the raw materials will be there to, to allow this thing to replicate. And then you can build a, a kind of a model of that, how those replicators might spread throughout a galaxy. And people have done this, of course. There's a great book, as an aside, I would recommend by uh, John Barrow and Frank Tipler, which is a huge influence on me, called The Anthropic Cosmological Principle. And it's a very famous book. It, there's a great series of calculations in there just showing you how you might estimate if you could build one of these rep self-replicating machines, how long would it take, given some reasonable technology, to move between star systems? How long might it take to replicate itself? And you end up with calculations that say that if someone had done that, even a few hundred million years ago, those machines would be everywhere. It's like a, it's like a virus, right, in a sense. It just propagates. It's an exponential growth of these things. And so you would cover the galaxy in them. And it is true that we haven't observed any. Um, so you might say that that's evidence of evidence that nobody ever did it. Or, <laughs> in the spirit of being scientific about it, you could think, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe these replicators are the size of a phone. You know, maybe they're tiny. Maybe they're so advanced that they're in the solar system and we don't recognize them. So you can, you can argue about the Fermi paradox. But broadly speaking, it's the observation that we've looked a bit and all our observations 
in the history of astronomy, of all the observations we've made, we have never seen evidence of anyone else. And that, so that's the, and it is a paradox because there's been so much time and so many planets, and it would seem as if somebody should have done something that we could see, and they haven't, as far as we can tell. We've been listening for decades, scanning the skies, hoping, or maybe fearing, that we might finally hear a signal from another world. But the silence remains. So why? Why has no one contacted us? One possibility is that civilizations don't last long. A planet may be teeming with life, but all it takes is a single catastrophic event to wipe it away. A super volcano, a massive asteroid impact, a sudden shift in climate. The universe is filled with cosmic hazards and life might never get the chance to become intelligent before it's erased. Or perhaps they do evolve intelligence. They build cities. They explore their planet. They look up at the stars, just like we do. But they never make it far. Technological civilizations may destroy themselves before they can reach out. Through war, environmental collapse, or something even more unforeseen. And then there's a darker thought. Maybe they know we're here but they choose to remain silent. Perhaps communication is dangerous. Perhaps the galaxy is not a friendly place, and the safest thing to do is to stay hidden. Each of these possibilities forces us to confront an uncomfortable truth. The silence we hear may not be an accident. It may be a warning. Carl Sagan famously said yeah, it's possible that civilizations don't get beyond this stage that we're at. So when you industrialize as a civilization, so the pre-space flight era or pre-interstellar flight era, you will hit problems which are probably common to all civilizations because they're just part of the laws of physics. So one of them is the challenge you pose to the climate of your planet. As you industrialize and build a bigger civilization, you'll use resources, you will affect the atmosphere, the planet, and so on. So there's a challenge, and, and you have to manage that. There's the de development of nuclear weapons, for example. So at some point, you will develop nuclear physics if you're going to be a spacefaring civilization. So you will develop the ability to destroy yourself, which is kind of, you know, it's not long. You go back 100 years, and we didn't have the capability to destroy ourselves. Now we could. We could choose to destroy our civilization. So it may be that those challenges are very difficult to navigate. It may be just kind of one of those, not quite a law of nature, but a law of societies, that they're just not able to navigate the challenges that industrialization and the development in nuclear science and so on raise. We haven't passed that test yet. So, you know, there's a name for it. It's called the Great Filter. So one of the arguments, so, so what we're asking here is, is there a filter that let's say the filters in our past. So let's say that it's just the difficult thing is for, is for life to go from single cell life to multicellular life. And that does look difficult, by the way, as far as we can tell on Earth. So maybe that's a filter, maybe it just doesn't happen very much. So there are microbes everywhere and nothing very complex. Then we'd be happy, right, because we've gone through the filter. But it could be the filter is in our future. It could be that it's now that you get this capability to affect your planet or destroy yourself through war or whatever it is, that, that's a filter and we're, we're approaching it. And it could be we don't pass through it. And that would also be a solution to the Fermi paradox. The universe is vast and full of questions we may never answer, but exploring them brings us closer to understanding our place in the cosmos. What do you think? Why is the universe so silent? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I read every single one. If you enjoyed this journey, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a story from the edge of space and beyond. Stay safe and stay curious. <laughs>